Hello friends and welcome back. So if you are new here, we are the M Square projects. We do the educational videos uh, and some engineering techniques to make you expertise. So let's get started. Today we are going to understand about stress. We are going to see the example how it is calculated, then its use and the complex example. Before starting with the stress, let's understand about this equilibrium position. Everybody in the universe is trying to attain the equilibrium position. When we apply any external force on the body, that body will try to resist to that external force. And when this force goes beyond its capacity, it will try to shift from this position to new position and it will try to attain new equilibrium. This is the equilibrium law. So we are going to understand about the first part of that. So when we apply external load, that body will generate the internal resistance. So that is called as a normal force. And that normal force measured per unit area that is called as a stress. So stress is an internal resistance offered by the body per unit area. Mathematically, it is written as applied force divided by cross section area. And it is denoted by Greek letter sigma. Sigma is equal to force per unit area. Its unit in the SI unit system is Newton per meter square or Pascals. So it is also converted into mega Pascals and the giga Pascals. So let's understand with the example. Let's take example of a square rod. On the square rod, I have applied load, which is tensile in the nature. So it is applied along the axis of the square rod. That's why it is called as a uniaxial tensile load. And when we apply the load on this square bar, what happens? Let's take a cross section at the middle of this square rod. When you take a cross section, what you can see, there is an internal force generated due to this external load and it is generated at each molecule. So this internal force is perpendicular to this cross section area and the summation of this all internal forces is equal to the applied external load. For representation purpose, we can show by possible number of arrows or by a single arrow. This is called as a normal force. Why? Because it is perpendicular to this cross section area. And this stress is a surface phenomena. So normal force per unit area is called as a normal stress. So here in this example, we have applied force of 100 Newton and cross section area of this rod is a 25 mm square. So stress formula is force per unit area. So 100 divided by 25 is equal to 4. 4 Newton per millimeter square. So stress generated in this square rod is equal to 4 Newton per millimeter square. So now we will understand what is the use of this stress. Basically, when we are designing a new structure for any particular application, we will use the concept of this stress. Like in wall brackets, like truss. So I will explain this with one example. Again take this square rod and we want to lift some weight to this square rod. How we can calculate the weight lifting capacity of this square rod? So for that purpose we can do the calculation based on the stress equation. Let's assume this is made up of a structural steel 
and its yield strength is 330 megapascal its cross section is 100 mm square so by rearranging the terms of this stress we get force is equal to stress multiplied by its cross section area so by doing this calculation we can see the weight lifting capacity or limit of this square rod is equal to 33000 newton or 3365 kg the load applied to this square rod is the tensile load so it is denoted by the positive sign but if we try to compress the square rod then it is denoted by the negative so negative sign indicates the stress generated is in the compressive nature so likewise we can use same principle on all of these uh, structures to calculate its weight lifting capacity or its stress we have seen the simple example of a square rod but when we come to the complex examples this variation is behaves very differently like let's take one example of a rotating shaft it is rotating clockwise and the force is applied on it and it is behaving as a cantilever now if you take the cross section at the middle what will happen due to this load this shaft will try to bend so its upper half portion will come into the tensile side so tensile stress will be generated and its lower portion comes in the compression side that is shown in the red color and when it rotates to the next cycle this bottom portion will come into the tensile side and upper portion will come to the compression side so this stress at the same cross section will be having positive and the negative so same cross section area experience both compression and the tensile on the one cycle alternatively thank you for watching